there, there's such a there's such a challenge for the Biden team because, as I've said here on the show over the past couple weeks, I've spent a good bit of time with Joe Biden. I've spent a couple of hours uh, with Joe Biden, sitting, talking, going around the world uh, as far as uh, uh, talking issues, talking the economy, talking inflation. Talk and I must say, when I was talking to him, my thought wasn't, oh, poor guy. My thought was, oh, my God, I wish Dr. Brzezinski were off the, uh, on the other side of the table right now because these two guys, I mean, 50 years of experience, and Joe Biden hasn't forgotten it. He may get pissed off at a press conference, and he may be thinking about uh, the Mexican border deal and say Mexico instead of Egypt. He knows what he's talking about. He circles back around, gets to Egypt. He, he might misplace a word here and there, but you talk to him for hours at a time. Is he slower? Does he move slower? Yeah, he's moved slower. Uh, is he stiffer? Yeah, he moves stiffer. Does he have trouble walking sometimes? Yeah, so did FDR. We got out of the Depression. We won a GD war against, against Nazism and, 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 and against the Japanese. But comparing that guy's mental state, I've said it for years now. He's cogent. Mm -hmm. But I undersold him when I said he was cogent. He's far beyond cogent. In fact, I think he's better than he's ever been intellectually, um, analytically, because he's been around for 50 years. And, you know, I don't know if people know this or not. Biden used to be a hothead. <laughs> sometimes that Irishman would get in front of the reasoning. Sometimes he would say things he didn't want to say. This is and and and. I don't really, you know what, I don't really care. Start your tape right now, because I'm about to tell you the truth. And F you if you can't handle the truth. This version of Biden, intellectually, analytically, is the best Biden ever. Not a close second. And I've known him for years. The Brzezinski's have known him for 50 years. If it weren't the truth, I wouldn't say it. And you read the New Yorker interview, don't think it's going to make a huge difference in Oshkosh, yes. but if you or the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. But if you really, if you want to know the truth, if you really give a damn, if anybody out there gives a damn about the truth, read that interview, and you'll sit and read through that, and you go, "Oh my God, there's just no comparison between Joe Biden and Donald Trump." Historians will look back, and they, they will say. Why was this race close in February, in early March? Because it makes no sense. And you've been around Biden enough to know. He, he's not going to he's not going to run a 4 2 2 at the combines. No, <laughs> but he might damn well save Western democracy from Russia. Yeah, all of that is right. And the challenge now for the Biden team is to change the narrative because that's not the story that most Americans believe if we are to accept the polls, that they are more concerned about Biden's age than Trump. Senator Chris Coons of Delaware, one of Biden's closest friends in the Senate, he this week was like, we need let, to let Joe be Joe. Let him be out there on the road. Let him be his best self. Uh, and Jen Palmieri, there's a major opportunity looming this week to start changing that storyline. And that is the State of the Union Thursday night. The president will follow that with some campaigning in Philadelphia and Atlanta, two key states. But what kind of message, and perhaps in the, in the world we live in, with where we, optics matter for a lot, what kind of performance does Biden need to deliver on Thursday to start changing the narrative so American people can see what we were just talking about? I would say, like, first of all, I would say, like, I feel really optimistic after coming out of the presidential primary season for, uh, for the Democrats and that Trump can consistently does not get Republican votes. You know, 20 to 40 percent of, of Republicans are still not voting for him. Uh, there, there is no energy. There is no anti-Biden energy in the Democratic Party. If that was going to happen, that was going to reveal itself in New Hampshire. Uh, Biden is not getting all of his votes from 2020. That means he has room to grow. Trump has like kind of tapped out. He's at 93 percent, according to The New York Times poll, of, of his supporters from 2020. So he doesn't have room to grow. Like I actually and the White House, he is, you know, this I mean, the president is out there more. He takes questions starting from the press. <laughs> starting to, that's fair. Um, I mean, in the last four or five weeks, he takes questions from the press multiple days a week. Um, you saw him, you know, you saw him on Seth Meyers. You saw him taking questions, you know, 
the ice cream situation, not the best to talk about uh, Gaza, but still, he's taking questions of that. And there, there is, there's been a ton of battleground state travel, and there's going to be more, right? Um, and they're going to amp that up. They're going to double that in the in the coming days. Um, but then, I think for the State of the Union, he can set, you know, at the. We did a thing on the circus when Trump, excuse me, God, I'll say that, Biden went to Israel. Um, of footage from him from when he was 29 years old, Senator with Indira Gandhi, mm -hmm. all through time as Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chair, Vice President, President of the United States. And you're like, this, of course, he has, his whole career, his whole life has been building to this moment to be this president and, in the United and States, by the way, and Jen, he is ready to do it. When does it pay off? It pays off when um, America has horrible relations with China, President Xi comes to San Francisco, yeah. and Joe Biden can go out there and talk to a guy that he's known since they were both the number two in their country. Right. And guess what? There's no sort of measuring the other person up. There's, there's a familiarity, and they sit down and they talk through it. And my God, how remarkable progress is made. Our militaries talking to each other again. Yeah, I mean, and, and trying to navigate Ukraine and then Israel and Gaza. And so I think Biden should project that tonight, tomorrow night, that, that level of experience and walk us through what he inherited and where he brought us. That's sort of the context that's been missing, I think, in terms of uh, economic uh, accomplishments. And then, of course, where are we going to go? Right? I, I, Laid a great foundation. Where are we going to go? That's the piece that's been missing. I, can I just say, it's such BS. Here's the lie that... Joe Biden is running against, other than the big lie and all the other lies here. The lie that things were magical under Donald right. Trump, that yeah. the economy was better under Donald Trump. Before COVID, everything was... Pro no, it wasn't. Before COVID, Donald Trump was ranked seventh in president since 1960 regarding economic growth. And by the way, this for some reason, oh, there's this past, we're not gonna talk about COVID because of course COVID was bad. Yeah, COVID was much, much worse because of Donald Trump. Absolutely. Why can't we say it? At a time when we should have been taking more precautions, he was telling people to put bleach in their veins. He was telling people if there's some way we could just put lights under the skin, they'd be okay. Like doing all of these stupid things. He made, whether you're going from the right or the left, Donald Trump made all the wrong calls on COVID. Somehow that has been lost. Yeah. That the mm -hmm. that the way COVID turned out in this country was inevitable. It was just a fact that it was the way it was going to be. That's not true. No. Go back four years ago to downplaying COVID. It's one case coming in from China. We can go on and on and on down the list. He could have had his moment. The guy he talks about being a big CEO, a big strong general, a big leader, and said, "We're gonna. Here's what we're gonna do." we got to shut things down for a little bit. We're going to figure out. We're going to race to a vaccine, which his administration did, actually. Yeah. And we're going to get through this together. He chose not to. He chose, stepped aside and said, we're, it's just going to take and, care and of itself. And if he had been a CEO, he could have, <laughs> instead of just, like, lying about it, killing hundreds of thousands of people by lying about it for as long as he did, and then, you know, panicking and shutting everything down, a real CEO would have looked at it and said... Okay, this is a real problem. Let's figure this out. It's moving fast. Yeah. People are dying. Let's figure out Let's what we're going to do. And then he could figure out, a real CEO could figure out, you know what? Doesn't make sense. We're learning. This isn't the, the 1919 pandemic. Mm -hmm. We're learning. Younger people are okay. Let's reopen the schools. Those kids, they, they, it's not like the 1919 flu where it was the young people who were all dying, right? A real CEO... A real leader could have done that, but Donald Trump couldn't because he was so invested in life. It's no worse than the flu. Mm -hmm. It's going to go away by spring. There are only 12 people in the country that have it. President Xi, Donald Trump said, is doing a fantastic job. Thank you, President Xi, on behalf of the American people. Why does he get a free pass for that?